The history of the United States Steel Corporation began in 1901 in New Jersey. A number of well-known businessmen participated in its creation, including Andrew Carnegie, Albert Gary, Charles Schwab, and J.P. Morgan. Carnegie founded the Carnegie Steel Company based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Gary founded the Federal Steel Company based in Chicago. In 1900, Schwab became president of the Carnegie Company and eventually approached Gary with the idea of a giant consolidation to form the United States Steel Corporation. With the help of J.P. Morgan, they bought out Carnegie's shares for more than $492 million and merged U.S. Steel, adding National Steel, National Tube, American Steel and Wire, American Steel Loop, American Sheet Steel, and American Tin Plate to the core. Carnegie and Federal Companies The merger was completed on February 25, 1901, the capitalization of the new corporation for the first time in history crossed the $1 billion mark, amounting to $1.4 billion. It also controlled two-thirds of U.S. steel production. Charles Schwab became the first president of the United States Steel Corporation, but due to a conflict with other members of the leadership, he left for Bethlehem Steel in 1903, making it the main competitor to U.S. Steel. He was succeeded as president by the third co-founder of the corporation, Albert Henry Gary, who headed it until his death in 1927. In the following decades, the United States Steel Corporation played an integral role in the history of the United States, including the supply of steel for countless iconic American buildings, bridges, and other structures. U.S. Steel supplied the steel and erected many notable structures in the United States, including San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, U.S. Steel Tower in Pittsburgh, where the company's global headquarters is still located, Willis Tower and Hancock Tower in Chicago, New Orleans Superdome, United Nations Building in New York, the Vehicle Assembly Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Station in Florida, Sculpture of the Unisphere for the 1965 New York World's Fair. An untitled sculpture by Pablo Picasso in Chicago, known as Chicago Picasso. Tappan Zee, Verrazano Narrows, and Henry Hudson Bridges in New York. Bridge across the New River Gorge in West Virginia. Bridge across the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. Three Sisters Bridges in Pittsburgh. In 1907, U.S. Steel bought its biggest competitor, the Tennessee Coal, Iron, and Railroad Company, which was headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama. The federal government attempted to use federal antitrust laws to break up U.S. Steel in 1911, the same year that Standard Oil was disbanded, but the attempt ultimately failed. In the 1930s, U.S. Steel, like many American companies, was going through the Great Depression. This economic downturn began in October 1929, forcing many businesses to cut jobs. In 1933, U.S. Steel's annual sales hit an all-time low of $288 million. However, during these challenging times, the company was preparing for the future. Beginning in 1932, under the leadership of Myron Taylor, U.S. Steel began closing some of its old plants, modernizing others, and building new ones. The company also began shifting its operations, producing more steel that could be used in consumer products such as refrigerators and other home appliances. During the wars and subsequent periods of peace, U.S. Steel supplied hundreds of millions of tons of steel used to build aircraft and ships of all sizes, as well as tanks and other military equipment. U.S. steel products were used to build 119 landing craft and tanks during World War II, with increased production during the war helping to reduce construction time from 260 days to 30 days. During World War II, over 113,000 U.S. steel employees enlisted or were drafted into the armed forces. U.S. Steel prospered in the post-war years, eventually merging various steel and raw materials subsidiaries and divisions through a series of reorganizations. By the 1980s, the company had undertaken a number of major diversification and restructuring efforts. 
In 1982, the corporation also expanded its horizons by entering the energy industry with the acquisition of Marathon Oil Company and in early 1986, Texas Oil and Gas Corp. In late 1986, in recognition of the fact that it had become a completely different corporation, United States Steel Corporation changed its name to USX Corporation with its main operating divisions in energy, steel, and a diversified business. Also this year, corporate reader Carl Icahn launched a hostile takeover of the steel giant in the midst of a shutdown. He held separate negotiations with the union and management and then proceeded to battle for proxies with shareholders and management. But he abandoned all attempts to buy out the company on January 8, 1987, weeks before union workers returned to work. At the same time, he retained his shares in the company. In October 1989, then-CEO Charles Corey announced a plan to sell some of Texas oil and gas's energy reserves to pay off debt and make a major share buyback. In June 1990, the company said it would merge Texas oil's operations with Marathon Oil to cut costs. On January 31, 1991, Carl Icahn won his long battle to restructure USX when the company announced that it would recapitalize by issuing a separate class of shares for its U.S. steel subsidiary, although both the energy and steel businesses would remain part of USX. In May 1991, USX shareholders approved the plan. Common stock of USX Corporation began trading as USX Marathon Group and new USX US Steel Group common stock was issued. By the 1980s, steel was a much smaller part of U.S. Steel's interests and the company changed its name to USX Corporation. After 1991, the company sold shares in its two main groups, U.S. Steel and Marathon Oil. Finally, in 2002, the company split in two and U.S. Steel Corporation re-emerged as a separate company. To survive, U.S. Steel Group continued to increase productivity by introducing new equipment to its plants. By 1995, profits had increased and U.S. Steel was producing steel cheaper than any other integrated steel company in the United States. In the late 1990s, several dozen U.S. steelmakers filed for bankruptcy, but U.S. Steel persevered. In 1997, USX, the largest steelmaker in the U.S., but only the 11th largest in the world, began looking for companies that would enable it to become a strong international competitor. The search stretched across several continents over the course of three years. In October 2000, USX announced the acquisition of a near-bankrupt former communist steelmaker in the Slovak Republic. U.S. Steel Košice was expected to sell steel to automakers in much of Eastern Europe. The share structure, in which USX Marathon and USX US Steel Group remained divisions of the same parent company but traded separately on the stock exchange, was criticized in 1999 and on January 1, 2002, Marathon Oil and United States Steel Corporation became independent companies. The fall in oil prices in the early 2000s and the continued decline of the U.S. steel industry made the existence of the oil and steel conglomerate inefficient. In October 2001, USX Corporation shareholders voted to accept the reorganization plan. The plan resulted in the spin-off of USX's steel and steel-related business into a publicly traded company in its own right, known as the United States Steel Corporation, the name of the corporation when it was founded a century earlier. The remaining USX energy businesses became Marathon Oil Corporation. On January 1, 2002, USX split into two separate companies, Marathon Oil and US Steel. The great steelmaker became independent again. His activities included steel mills in Gary, Indiana, Birmingham, Alabama, and near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Abroad, she owned a plant in Slovakia. Global steel overcapacity and rising imports of cheap steel hit the U.S. steel industry in the early 2000s, forcing many producers into bankruptcy. The newly reorganized U.S. steel company held its ground. 
U.S. Steel acquired the assets of the former National Steel Corporation in 2003, adding iron ore reserves and significant integrated steel production capacity. The deal moved U.S. Steel from the 11th largest steelmaker in the world to the 5th largest at the time. In 2007, the company acquired Lone Star Technologies, a leading manufacturer of welded pipes for the oil and gas industry. The addition of Lone Star's assets and experience strengthened its position in the growing energy sector and made U.S. Steel the largest steel pipe manufacturer in North America. In 2018, the company launched its best of both transformational strategy to make U.S. Steel truly globally competitive by bringing together the best technologies from both integrated and mini smelters. Over the next three years, major strategic investments are made in technology and advanced manufacturing. The company currently operates in three main areas. Flat steel, steel production in 2017 at four U.S. mills, the largest of which is Gary Works in Indiana. European operations, production of flat steel products in Slovakia. Pipes, the production of pipes for the oil and gas industry. New York Stock Exchange, ticker X.